And I want to thank everyone for coming today to this shop class. It's a rather special one. It's going to be an introduction to scripts in PaintShop Pro. And presenting for you is Carol Aslang, who is a rather knowledgeable person with, uh, with PaintShop Pro and is uh, kindly agreed to kind of share her experience and some of her tips and tricks for how you can really get more out of PaintShop with uh, the built-in scripting capabilities. So with that, I'm going to hand everything over to you. Okay, so hi everybody. Uh, a lot of you might know me already from uh, online, and yes, I'm kind of specializing uh, in scripting for PaintShop. Uh, some people are wondering what are scripts, and scripts are that the word script is probably used a lot on, on the internet, or at least in uh, computing programming. And a script is a set of commands that are recorded or coded and played back exactly. So it's just like a recipe that you give the program. And PaintShop, since version 8, has that ca uh, capacity of recording scripts, coding scripts, and playing scripts or running them. So why do we want to use scripts uh, there are various reasons and you can have a script that will repeat the same steps over and over and over again so instead of repeating the same boring steps you can have a script that will do it for you all the time so that will save time it can also speed uh, the process because sometimes if for example if you want to place guidelines if you have to place 10 guidelines very precisely, it's not always very quick to do. So it's kind of a long process. But yeah, if you have that recorded as a script, you hit the run and and it's it's just there very quickly. And also it can make something very more more precise than having to calculate uh, manually. And we'll have some examples later on. So uh, some questions I've heard is, can I use scripts in any version? Uh, like I said, scripts started in, with version 8, and from, since that point, that feature has been part of PaintShop. So all the versions 8 and above have that uh, ability. However, if you find some scripts in one version, they might or might not work in another version, especially if you go backward. So if somebody uh, is recording, if you are recording a script with version 14 and then uh, you want to use it on your laptop that has version 12, it might not work. It will depend. It's usually uh, compatible with more recent version, but backward, it's not always the case. So, and also, some people have noticed, especially if you found some scripts online or if you had looked at um, your program how, when it was installed, there are two folders. Some, one folder is called Restricted Scripts and one folder is called Trusted Scripts. Why are there two folders? And that's because some of the commands in a script can affect files, images, or even your computer with the more advanced uh, or complex scripts. And in the trusted scripts, everything goes. So it means that whatever is in there will be executed, including something that you might not want, like delete images and things like that. So it's always a good idea to put everything in the restricted scripts where those commands that can affect files, images, and your computer altogether will not be allowed to be executed. So unless it's specifically required, like if you buy a script or you download the script and the scripter knows that a specific command has to be used, it will instruct you to put that script in a trusted uh, script folder. Again, you have to trust your script and obviously trust the source where you got the script. Okay, now, scripts are in PaintShop and some people are familiar with the Photoshop actions. Are they the same? Well, they are kind of similar. They are based on the same thing and actions are 
also a set of commands. However, uh, you cannot switch from one to the other. So if you have an action for Photoshop that you can find online, you cannot run it on PaintShop. And the same applies for the scripts in PaintShop. They cannot be used with Photoshop. So uh, if you have something, if you want something for PaintShop, it has to be done for PaintShop. Okay, so now how do we use scripts? Um, if you have version 14, I counted and I was kind of surprised, I didn't realize how many, but your version 14 comes with 72 scripts and I have here a list of them. This little menu, uh, menu bar is available, it's not there by default, you have to go under view and toolbar and script, so this usually you don't have it and it's it's just uh, an easier way to access your scripts that way. There's another way you go under File, Scripts, Run, and then it will bring you to where you have your scripts. But I find it's much easier to have the toolbar ready here. So this is one part. You can have that toolbar. Another thing when you run scripts, it's always a good idea to have the script output palette. Okay, what is that? The script output palette is also accessible under view, palette, script output, or shift F3. And we have it here. Okay, this is a little window where you'll have some commands and it will tell you if the script has completed successfully if you have error messages that's where they will appear um, occasionally you'll have also some commands like if you have five choices of things for your script it's going to appear often in this palette so it's always a very good idea to have this uh, palette open when you run a script okay now go at the bottom. Also when you run script usually you have here that's the toggle execution mode. Uh, I don't know which one is uh, by default but one is going to run the script silently and one will run the script interactively. I always recommend to use it silently because otherwise you're going to be clicking OK all the time and uh, accept and this and that and you'll be given also all the the uh, the windows for all the commands and if there are the information is already coded in the script you have nothing to change so like what's the point in clicking OK and OK and OK and especially sometimes you have some pretty long scripts and it'll, it takes forever so you just leave it at silent that way you run the script and it goes um, on, on its own unless the, the code is recorded or coded in such a way that it will specifically ask the user for uh, some input. Okay, so let's start now with the real stuff. And I have a, an image and I'll just use one of the script that comes with your uh, paint shop which is called a watercolor so it comes with uh, version 14 I did not check if those were also present in older versions uh, what comes with each version can be similar but can be slightly different too so when you have chosen your script you simply click on that little arrow and you let it go. So let's click and let's see. You can see at the bottom it's kind of thinking. Some steps ju are just taking a little bit longer than others. So Sometimes you can see the commands once, one at a time and even in the script output palette you can see which steps are taken. Sometimes it's kind of interesting to watch. In this example it's really slow because of the, some of the commands are really slow and probably because my image is a little large too.
Okay, it says now it has completely successfully and well, it doesn't show very much. Okay, so I'll just undo this. I'll, I'll kind of see a little bit here. Okay, maybe if I was to resize it a little bit. Um, and in pixels, I'll go with, let's say just 900 pixel. And let's see now if the script will, you can see it goes a little faster. And how different will it be? I don't know. So. Okay. I guess maybe there's not that much contrast. But you can see kind of around, if I zoom in a bit, kind of that look here of watercolor. Okay. Can you see a little bit better? Okay. Interesting photo, if anybody is interested, that's called a sun pillar. Kind of a nice phenomenon to watch when the sun rises. Okay, so this is one example. I'll just undo it again. Oh, yeah. You can see the contrast a little bit better when you go in back and forth like that. Okay, so back to my original. I'll try another script, which is called... A vintage, I think it's numbered on top. Vintage here, number 12. And let's see what it will do with my to my photo. See, that's definitely different. So you can see how it was very quick and you had, I guess it executed only one command, which was called the time machine probably added a border and everything. Um, let's try another one. It's called Photo Edge. Where is it? Photo Edges. And you'll see that this one is a little different because it will ask me for some information. So it's partly interactive. That means that some of the commands were coded to be interactive. So whether I run it silently or not even if I want to run it silently I will be prompted for a question so here I'm prompted to add a um, some settings so that's for the design or the edges so what do I want uh, more softness the bristle I can play around with that and when I'm done I just click OK and it will apply those settings to my photo. It can take a little while. And now you can see you have that edge so it was that photo edge um, script okay let's undo this one okay that photo is going to get a few views and another one is called simple caption here where it will prompt me for another type of input and this time it's going to be some text so I run this one and so it says enter a caption for the image that will be placed below the image. So if I say um, sun pillar 2010, I think that was when I took it. And it adds the text at the bottom here. Kind of small, but it's still there. So. It's, it looks kind of like if, like you frame your picture. So this is one, uh, one way you can run the scripts. Those are the scripts that come with your paint shop. But there's also ways that you can download. You have some scripts that are available online for free. Some are purchasable. And let's have a look at uh, this this is a script I want to add 
Okay, just before this one, I'll go back with my sun pillar. I'll just undo this. And there is a pr uh, script that I have available in my store. It's called Polaroid. It's a free script, so if you want to peek and you want to have that. If any of you are old enough to remember those Polaroid photos where you had a wide frame, but at the bottom it was kind of wider and, you know, we would uh, handwrite something. And you have this, so I would run it. I have that just that intro window. And now I have my frame. Notice that the frame has a sp kind of it's kind of a wide frame, but that's because my photo was small. If my photo was larger, like I have that's the original size I had initially, and I run the script again. So it's it still has that frame and I have a Polaroid photo. Well, it's kind of a simple script. Now another kind you have is going to be using a ribbon. This is just a ribbon that's part of a scrapbooking kit and I can turn it into a rig rack. So you run again that little that's just my little intro window and here I have a rig rack ribbon. So if I have a blue ribbon that is straight, I just turn it into a rig rack like that. Now other scripts will do more than one command. Like the rig rack was kind of easy. It's just like a uh, wave setting and a slight bevel and that's about it. However, here I have a template that is used for scrapbooking. And if I look at the the layer palette it has several layers so all those layers are kind of nice but let's say I want to make a scrapbook page and I would like to have my the whole template uh, side like mirrored from this so I want to have that large picture on the left and a small picture on the right and that little ribbon here I want it on the other side and so on uh, even though in Paint Shop you can rotate the whole thing together, there's no command to do the mirror or the flip completely, like all the layers at once. So I just coded one. It's called Switch It All. So you'll see, of course, the text is only a uh, placeholder, so it, it doesn't really matter whether it is uh, backward or not. And I'll just click, and you'll see it will switch and I have the choice either mirror or flip so I can either go sideways or up or down and in this case I'll just have it mirrored and look at it it goes and everything is now mirrored from what you had so that's kind of an easy way to do because if you look at this template right now it would be it would take a while to go and go under image uh, whoops where is it uh, flip horizontal and you do one you change layer you go and do it again it's just a little long so the script makes it makes the whole process much quicker okay so that's kind of how you can use scripts that are either with your paint shop or scripts that you got from somebody else from a store or your friend or somewhere else online but you can also record scripts and that's kind of the beauty of scripts those who do code scripts they can record them they can code them so there's a difference between recorded scripts and coded scripts um, the main difference is usually the complexity level because when you record a script, it will just play back exactly what you did. So if you clicked at a certain point in your image to flood fill, it will always look for that same exact point. So if your image is not the right size, it won't fill anything. So you have that in that toolbar here, you have that record, start script recording or record button. And we'll just 
see what we can do with that. Okay, I have this image and let's say I want to have a script that will add a border and maybe add a watermark. So I will start with just showing you that I have here Oh, darn. Okay. This is a black. That's me. Let's see what. Cascade. I'll go back to where I was. Um, this is a little detail. So, this, on, just on this black uh, background, I'll show. I had a tube that I created. Here, that is um, with, say, what I would like to use for my watermark. So this is just a sample. Okay, this I don't need, this I don't need. This. Okay, so let's start recording. So I will record all the steps. So until I stop my recording will go. I can pause if there's something I want to check because maybe I want to change image and something like that and I don't really want to have that in the code. So maybe I'll just start and add a small um, okay now I have an Im a layer here. Okay. So I have a background image. Let's say I want to add a border. So add a border Maybe I'll want a black um, 10 pixel border all around. Okay. And maybe I want to add another border. Come on here. Maybe that's going to be, let's say, 30 pixels and white. And maybe a final border. That's going to be maybe five, or well maybe just ten, it's kind of symmetrical in black again. So that kind of frames my image. And I would like to add my watermark. So I'll add a new layer, a raster layer, I just accept the default. And I'll go and use my tube and click in the center. From there, if I want to have it standard, maybe I want to reduce the opacity to, let's say, 36. Okay, this would be maybe something I want to do. And if I have, if I, if I have a different image, maybe later I'll want to move this watermark uh, in a different position, maybe depending on your photo. So now that I'm done with the steps that I wanted, I'll go and save the script. And it will prompt me. It goes in restricted. I didn't do anything odd. So I'll go, I'll call it, let's say, scripting. I'm not sure it's going to be saved at the right place, but that's just because I changed it around. Sorry for the delay for that. My pen shop. My PSP files, and I'll go into the restricted. Script restricted. And I'll call it, let's say, framed watermark. Save. Okay. Now let's see. What happens if I'm to open another image? So I'll go back into my photos and let's go get my soccer photo. And I'll open another photo which is the same size. Let's find now my framed frame. Oh farmed. Okay, it's a typo. doesn't matter. See how the computer is not fussy. I'll just use my typo. And I'll just run and see what it does. Okay. Now I'm not sure why. Let's see. 
Maybe I have to promote that. Wow, that doesn't look good. Yeah, that's what happens when it's live. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Carol? Yes? I think in the original one, you had that extra layer. Yes. I, no, I removed... You know it's a live webinar. <laughs> no, I had removed that uh, uh, initially. Let's go. I'll just go and... See, it was a background. So I'm not sure. Let's see if I use the same image. It still doesn't want to. That's picky. Okay. Now I'm stumped. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's say I just want to add maybe just a watermark. Let's see if it's cooperating then. I'll just add a new layer. Oh, might as well start the recording. Add a new layer. Just add the watermark on there and reduce the opacity and record and I'll just call it watermark not framed and let's see if I use my other image and I'll find just my watermark okay well I guess it didn't like my my frame my added border and well, you can see that I added that so if I go and I open another picture the same size I can run the same and I'll have my watermark now what happens if I'm to open let's see not this one probably the last one of course now if I'm to use this image here maybe I can use the same thing and notice how it looks smaller because my image was much bigger so in this case the script won't differentiate whether I have a large picture or a small picture or a very small picture so this is some of the limitation so if you have you want to add your mar watermark and you measure and let's say that it cooperates with adding borders it will be different if you have a different picture I wonder if if I was to use this one that I had earlier if the frame or what I call the farmed watermark if it would work no it's not working I wonder if it's promoted to the background no not even I'm really not Hi, sure girl. yes it, it, it's hard when you're on stage. Yeah. Uh, I think you were still recording. It, it, you were actually recording when you deleted the extra layer at the very beginning of the script. Yes. And I think that's why it keeps calling it up. It's possible. Okay. Yeah. Shall we, shall we try again? or anything. Because I think I want to show how it will or not uh, work on a different size. So let's just remove yeah, good this. Example. Yeah, okay. So I'll do it again. Okay, let's do it properly. So now I'm recording. I'm going to add the border, a small border. I'm going to add a larger border, 30 pixels, and another small border at 10 in black. Now I add a new layer onto it so I can have my uh, tube and I put it right in the center because I know the size okay let's say I call it frame this one <laughs> yes okay so let's get another soccer picture and let's see not the farmed one I'll have the frame one yes thanks Evelyn <laughs> that's probably what happened so you can see that sometimes you might want to apply a, a run a script on a different kind of image uh, or something that has a different uh, type of layer. So you, ha you have to be careful um, of those little details. And let's see what, what happens if I use another photo and I use the same script. Okay, so you can see that the frame looks smaller simply because my image is larger. Okay, so 
that's kind of what it's supposed to do and also if once I, I run it because at this point I did not merge it I still have the option and I can move my watermark at the bottom or at the top depending on what I have as far as space and maybe also the opacity it could depend on what you have so it all, all depends on what you want to do one little uh, companion of the scripts is the batch process uh, so if I have all my soccer pictures they're all the same size I know no problem there I want to add the the frame to all of them if I have two or three pictures it's fine you can run them but if you have a hundred pictures because I know some photographers now with digital cameras they go click 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 everywhere and they have tons of pictures and they don't really want to choose and delete some so they can you, they can have a lot so you can you can go under file you have here batch process and from here you can choose script you can choose which script you want so if you want for example that framed watermark the one that works well I'll browse and go and find all the pictures I want to um, to frame and I go here let's say I have all those pictures that's quite a few right so I s select them all I can do stop on error you can do that or you can continue because sometimes you might have some photos that could be corrupt I it happened to me once and I was kind of wondering what was going on and maybe I want to have a copy of it maybe I want to have a new name so um, I want to have something else or maybe I want it in a different folder so let's say just go like this and I don't know how many I don't know if you notice how many pic uh, image I had this one I'll just delete from there remove from the list and let's see if I start so I had 47 pictures then you can see the progress now I did not run them before so I'm crossing my fingers that they will do what they're supposed to do and it's done so let's see now if I have my photos okay look now all my photos are framed alright so of course in this case I had a folder with the copy of my originals I did not run the batch process on my original that could be uh, a little devastating if you have a problem with that and also at this point I don't have a separate layer because it was saved so it's if I wanted to move my uh, watermark somewhere else or fade it or something I might have luck so you might not want to uh, save or run like that but if you have just a frame uh, that's fine oh, the frame is always going to be around your uh, your picture okay now how about a script I'll just undo all that how about resizing okay so again if you went on vacation you had your camera you took uh, 3,000 pictures and they're all because you had a really high-tech camera they're all like 5,000 pixels wide and you want to put them on your blog or you want to put them on Facebook and that is just too big you can't you have to resize them so I have here a picture at which is 1600 pixels so that would still be too big for a blog so let's say I want to resize it um, a bit so I could record a script so I'll just record I go image resize so I'll just 
resize my photo and maybe I want to resize it to 600 pixels. So this is what I want. And I re um, save it. So I'll just go resize. I'll go 600. So I'll just know what it was resizing to. Because if you just call it resize, you might not remember. So if I open another image. Ah. Okay, not exactly what I want. Again, I'll go cascade and just hide those. Okay. So yeah, if I have this one and I go back to resize, my resize 600, I run. I have no problem. He, you mo probably didn't see anything, but it, it showed in the ruler here that this photo is now 600. Now what if, I'm kind of afraid of opening the wrong one now. No. Yes. Ah. That's not convenient. Okay, I have to cascade and hide the other ones. Okay, so I have my photo here and I'll just undo the run of the commands I had before. So let's say I want to resize this one. Oh, look what happened. Now it's the other way and it's not it's not resized the way I would like to because I would still like to have my photo in portrait format which won't do because my resize command I had if you can see what it was I think default is still there nope it's not there but th the numbers here when I did it with the other photo were kept so not that one see this one so if I undo and I did image and I do resize I did 600 by 450 so that's what the script recorded so even if my other pictures would not look good at 600 by 450 the computer and the script they, they don't know the difference so this is one limitation of recording script as is and that's where the coding would come in and you would have to open the the script and you'd have to tell and use variables so that's more complex that's just an advanced level where you would have uh, something to tell the, the computer or the script or tell the program okay measure the size of the width measure the height if the width is uh, more than the height that means you cannot uh, uh, resize it in that manner and, and so on so that's more advanced it's feasible it's like, like everything it's all done so that kind of explains why if you are to resize something and if you want to resize all your photos, you might want to divide your portrait orientation photos in one folder and the other ones in a different folder. So you can possibly go and batch process all the ones in one direction and then you record another script for the portrait and you can do it that way. So that would be one way to uh, run and resize all your photos that you have from your last vacation or trip or your kids or the birthday party okay so that that is kind of a, a wrap up of the introduction to s using scripts there are scripts that you can uh, obtain you can purchase scripts if you want um, I have lots of scripts um, that you can buy this there's a, s a store it's called Creation Cassel and this is the link creationcassel.com slash store where you can get a lot of scripts the simple scripts that I showed you the Polaroid 
the switch it all and the rig rack they're all free you can just go in and pick them from the store and also if you want to learn some more scripting like I was explaining about the variables and more complex scripts that are more than just recorded scripts there is a brand new course and the, instruct the instructor is Suze Shook she's uh, absolutely wonderful and she's the one who taught me all the scripting that I know and it's a brand new course it was put live in the campus about an hour ago so it's fresh so the link for that is uh, a scrapbookcampus.com and you go under scripting course it's right there in the navigation bar so at this point Evelyn do we have any particular question Well, actually, uh, <laughs> a number of the questions were about where can people find more online training for scripts okay. uh, and for scripting. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you if you have uh, it available, um, but uh, if you want to show people what is involved in that uh, in that uh, scripting course, it might help them figure out um, if it's going to be the right one for them. Okay, um, do you want me to have a look do, at the page? Yeah. yeah, if you have access to it. If not, that's fine. Um, um, it's up to you. Here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's here. I didn't want to, you know, throw you off. <laughs> no, no, no problem. And uh, here's the course. And you have uh, you have a total of 25 lessons, and it's really uh, t thorough. It's really going step by step. Suze is a, a, a wonderful instructor. All the in instructions are in writing. There's a lot of writing. I have, I think, it's like 300 pages of notes that I printed off this course. So it's really an uh, incredible course and you can just get uh, one, one um, they call them course, but overall it's another course. So <laughs> you can get several courses or one and the whole program and each course is five lessons. So this, so you have, you explore how to edit, uh, adding some commands in particular, using the message box some people were wondering how to add little boxes that are popping up uh, like I had in my uh, in my scripts or how to get um, the user to choose what color they want to have this or that so it's all they have all that and how to get the numbers oh, uh yes Carol, are, yes. the, uh, are these lessons, one of the questions is, are these uh, live or are these at your own pace? They're, uh, they're self, uh, uh, call them uh, self-study. So you, oh, okay. you buy it, you download it, you do it as, at your own rhythm. They all have assignments, but you don't have to hand them in. But believe me, you have to do the assignments if you want to understand. They are absolutely great, they're detailed, the answers are in the next chapter. It's, uh, it's it's really fun. It's it's not always easy, but it's kind of uh, it's great. Now now I know that, uh, the thought of coding and programming can make some people um, you know get a cold sweat on. Yes. <laughs> so there there are um, with Paint Shop there are over seventy scripts already available yes. that you may find you set up and. Uh, and Carol, you were mentioning that you have a number of them that are available for, for free as well. So for those who aren't going to want to geek out, <laughs> they have access to uh, to these scripts online that are already done for them. Yeah, so uh, they can go in my store. There are a few. Uh, Suze also has some on her site. I just did not get the uh, the link. Um, maybe I'll find a way to get. She has some. They're free. They're not the same kind as the ones I have. So we we'll complement each other. Okay. Well, you know what? What we'll do is because I'm recording the session, um, I'll make sure that those links are available uh, with the video. So we're going to be posting on our YouTube channel, and uh, I'll make sure that in the description as well that the links that we've just showed you here, uh, you'll be able to access as well. Uh, and I'll make sure to post them again on our on our Facebook page and and so on, so everyone can kind of find those, explore those afterwards. Um, now I have a couple of questions. 
Um, one of them is how do you decide, and I think you mentioned it, but maybe you could explain again, how do you decide which folder you would save a script to, the trusted or the restricted? Uh, it's the, the first rule is put them in the restricted script. That's going to be uh, saving your computer from any uh, your computer or your images from any uh, command that you might not want, except if you download some scripts that are specifically requiring you to put them in the trusted script. So, for example, in the scripts I have in my store, I would see 90% of them, they just go in the restricted script. They would work in the trusted script, but it's just a bad idea to dump them all in that folder because it, everything in there uh, your computer won't just you won't put any filter on it. It would just everything that's in there it will execute, and sometimes you might not want to execute some delete files and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, now there was a, a question too. Um, now you showed uh, this is since we just have a couple of minutes left too. Sure. Uh, you showed using a picture tube to add a watermark. Um, can you still script using the, the watermarking feature? I'm not sure what you to mean. To add a watermark? Um, in, uh, in Paint Shop, there's an option to add a watermark. So I think the question is, you were using a, um, a picture tube. Okay. Uh, the question is, can you use any of the other menus or options to add yes. scripts, not just the tools yes. you showed? Yes, absolutely. Any command that is in your toolbar, any tool that you have, uh, you can use everything in a script. So everything that PaintShop can do, a script can be uh, coded to do it. So if you want to use a different feature, I use my, uh, the, um, for example, the border, I use that, but I could have done it manually. I could have used uh, under, I think there's selection, modify, and, whoops, um, select selection borders, anything I can use. But you have to just be careful that, for example, if you want to flood fill something and you go at the point of 1,000, 1,000, and then you use a photo that's 900 wide, then it, it will just try to flood fill somewhere else. And it was just going to not do anything. But anything in Paint Shop can be coded. And when you reach the coding part, you can actually do more than what Paint Shop can do. You can include random stuff and uh, all kinds of commands that are outside of Paint Shop, but you can start with the recording, Just you just go with what is in Paint Shop. Uh, I was just going to mention, uh, because it was a question too, um, uh, what you're talking about for uh, scripting, uh, that also is a, a topic we're going to explore a little more in depth later, is how you can actually use those to customize your workspace. Um, there was a comment about the color of your workspace yes, uh, and how they could turn it blue as well. I just wanted to mention that that's because it's under view. The, the service update. Yeah, yeah, because the service pack. Um, so it's under view, workspace color, and okay, this is the original. I just kind of like my blue. <laughs> so that's just a personal uh, preference. And, and just to note too that you've got a couple extra icons at the top there on your uh, your a standard bar so that you can actually add scripts to uh, toolbars, you can create custom toolbars, you can add them to your menus, there's, there's once you get going with scripts and once you start using them a lot you have a lot of options to kind of uh, kind of bind those to different commands or yeah. toolbars. Thanks there, <laughs> there is also There is also a tutorial, a video of uh, binding scripts in the campus. If you go into tips and tricks there is a video, it's just accessible like that of how to bind scripts. So you have a script and instead of going through this menu all the time, you can get this particular uh, script with an icon and you can put it on your, I don't know, your uh, layer palette or you can put it on top here, wherever you want. You can actually put it inside a menu if you want. I don't have one here. I think I can just demonstrate. I think I had one, I'm not too sure. Here, I have one in this uh, palette here in my version 9. I just did not customize my version 14 the same way. So, you can just bind cool. and have those icons everywhere you want. You top, left, in the palette. <laughs> in the, um, there's also, for example, in, there's a flip in, in um, horizontal and vertical in PaintShop 14, which only 
which doesn't work exactly the same as in the previous versions. So there is a set of scripts in, in the store that's free, which will give the users of version 14 the same kind of flip and mirror that they had in previous version. So you can just bind the script and simply put it with here so you can you have them all in the menu as if you had them from the start. Cool. Well, I think we're almost out of time. So I know some folks are hanging around because I did promise that there would be a, uh, a winner for uh, Paint Shop Pro Ultimate. Um, so uh, Carol, I really want to appreciate, I really appreciate you coming out and doing this because uh, Again, I start running out of material when I keep doing the shop classes, so I need to haul in you experts <laughs> to kind of share what you guys know because you've been using Paint Shop for, for you, know, you know it inside and out. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. So, um, guys, I will have, we are recording it. Um, I'm going to be posting this uh, online. Uh, so with that, I'm going to say thank you, and uh, then we'll be picking a winner. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, I'm going to be sending out links as well, so for those of you that want to geek out and get uh, get scripting on your own and find out how you can do more, I'm going to send links so you can explore those courses uh, and also those uh, extra scripts, both the, the free and the advanced ones that uh, Girl has available on her store. You can access those. And uh, we'll be seeing you guys at the next shop class. So with that, thanks everyone. Bye. And thank you, Carol. You're welcome.